What's going on everyone? Walker Dead here, back at it again with another video. This is season one, episode five, titled The Vartos of Atlanta. Thank you all so much for the love and support. I really, really do appreciate it. And let's get into this episode now, shall we? The episode begins with Dale on watch and he gets up from his chair and he notices that Jim is digging holes. He's digging holes and uh and uh Dale's like why is this guy digging holes for? I wonder. That's what he's thinking in his mind. Um meanwhile back in the thing, um Jim is digging holes and he is not stopping, he's digging holes, digging, digging, digging until he's done. And then the next shot is back at Atlanta on um, back on the rooftop, uh Daryl is pissed off. He grabs his crossbow and names it at T Dog. And and then Rick grabs his gun and he points it at Daryl and he says, I won't hesitate. I don't care if every walker in the city hears it. And Daryl gets a little upset a little bit and he puts down his crossbow and he asks his uh T Dog, do you have a do rag or something? And T Dog says, Yeah, and he gives you the right to Daryl. And Daryl tells the crew, the group, that, uh, the, that the saw couldn't work on, on the chains, on handcuffs. And Daryl says, Ain't that a bitch? He puts, uh, Merle's hand on the door, door rag and ties it up, and he puts his, puts it in Glenn's, uh, bag. The bag he used for supplies, basically. And, uh, Daryl notices a blood trail leading into leading into a small room with cables with it on it and John says, Look look there's a blood trail, let's follow it because the Daryl's not Daryl if Merle's in uh in the building somewhere, we gotta find him. And uh Daryl agrees and they they all decide to follow the blood trail and uh in the room Daryl screams, Yo Merle, are you here? And they go down a stairway. They go down the stairs and um, they notice that nobody is there. Just all they see is two walkers. Like they reach, reach the main living room of the building, and they see see two dead walkers on the ground. And it looks like that Merle beating beating them with a hammer, not a hammer, uh, a wrench. Daryl notices this and is like, "Damn, this this great son of a bitch must have took them both out one handed." He's a tough guy, you see my brother. And uh John says, Yeah. And then uh that Rick tells Daryl any man could have passed out from blood loss. Meanwhile, back at the Atlanta camp, um Andrea and uh Amy come back with multiple fishes and Morales is so happy by this, he tells all the girls Wow. <laughs> And he also says, uh, thanks, that, uh, he says, the, the package has arrived. <laughs> Thank you. Because of you, my children will eat tonight. Thank you. And, uh, Andrew's like, don't thank me, thank Dale in his crazy canoeing gear. And, uh, Amy, Avesta, Jackie, Morales, and everyone's so happy over this. And, but unfortunately, uh, Dale breaks the bad news to everybody and, uh, and uh Andrew's like, Yo Dale, when was the last time you used all uh, use all this bait, huh? And uh Dale tells the group that hey, can I have all your attention please? He tells the group that I don't mean to alarm anybody, but um we may have a bit of a problem. And uh Shane and Morales, Vesta and everybody else are looking at uh Jim like digging the holes, like digging. He keeps digging, obviously. Anyone that stops in the next shot is John, Rick, uh, Glenn, T Dog, and Daryl back in Atlanta. They uh, approach his kitchen and they notice that the stove is covered in blood. And they notice that the, the blood trail ends um, at a windowsill. And uh, Rick looks at uh, the stove and he looks at the iron and uh, Rick tells the group he caralized the stone. And, uh, Daryl said that was smart. See, you, 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 you don't underestimate my brother. No one can kill Merle, but Merle. 
And uh, T-Dog says, well, that's a man outside injured. And he probably is still bleeding to death, possibly. And uh, they look out the window and they notice that he broke that window. How can anybody uh, go go out? Go out in the neighborhood like that. And uh, Daryl says it's better than being left behind for death by you, sorry pricks. And Daryl says, Now you trying to pretty cool. And uh, Daryl tells Rick, You couldn't kill him. Couldn't do it for, for uh, a dead, undead bastard. And Rick says, What well, about a thousand undead bastards? Different story, right? And uh, Daryl says, You can take a tally. Going after myself, Rick says. Tells, tells Daryl, wait, and uh, Daryl tells Rick, get your hands off me. You can't stop me. And Rick says, I don't blame you for what you lost. He's family. I get that. I went through hell to find mine. I don't know exactly how you feel. And he also tells Daryl that we could help you search a couple box box away from the city, but only if we keep a level head. And Daryl says, I can do that. And, uh, Rick looks at T-Dog, and T-Dog says, well, well, we could look, but only if we want to go for the guns first, because I'm not going on, going on the streets of Atlanta unarmed. And John says, well, are we going to stand here and twiddle, or are we going to do something? And then the next shot is, is Dale, Avesta, Laurie, and the and uh, all, everyone in the Atlanta group, uh, group confront, cr confronting Jim. And uh, Shane's like, why are you digging holes for? You digging holes like it's uh, down to the dead or something? And uh, he, Jim says, doesn't matter, I'm not hurting anybody. And uh, Morales tells Jim that, you, that Dale told us that you've been out here digging holes for hours. And, uh, and Jim says, yeah. And then Lori says... They're not going to say it, so I will. What you're doing is scaring my son and Kerb's daughter. And uh, Jim tells Lori that I'm not, it doesn't matter. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm just out here digging holes. So why don't you just please go and leave me in hell alone? And uh, Sh Shane's like, can I have some trouble? And uh, Jim's like, or what? And then Shane's like, there is no or what. I'm asking you, I'm coming to you, and I'm asking you, please, I don't want to have to take from you. And, uh, Jim's like, or what, you're gonna, you're gonna smash my face in like you did with Ed? And then Shane says, Jim, that, uh, that was different Jim, and then, uh, and then the Vesto uh, says, you weren't there. Ed was out of control, and he was hurting his own wife, and he was hurting me as well. And then Jim, Jim drops the shovel and says, that's their marriage, not mine. Jesus. And you've seen his face, right? What's left of it, at least. You see, that? that's what happens when someone crashes you. And then Shane tells uh, Jim that was different, Jim. And then uh, Jim grabs a shovel and try swings at uh, Shane, but Shane dodges uh, the attack and scuffle, scuffles uh, Jim to the ground. And Jim's screaming, I'm okay, I'm okay, don't hurt me, don't hurt me. And uh, Shane's like, calm down, no one's gonna hurt you, I'm just gonna handcuff you and, and make sure you calm down so you don't go, go berserk again. Shane's like, everything's gonna be okay, everything's gonna be okay. And uh, Jim tells Shane, yeah, right. That's why I told my family. I told it to them like a thousand times. But it didn't matter. The dead still got them. The only reason I got away was because they were too busy eating my family. And I was helpless. Helpless to do anything. Or it's like, oh snap. And then the next shot is uh, Daryl, John, Rick, and the others back in Atlanta. They're like, they're like discussing a plan on uh, how to get the bag of guns. And uh, Glenn tells uh, tells uh, tells the group it's not a bad plan. Just hear me out. And that uh, there are three three corners, right? So Daryl. I can't, like, like, here's the thing, guys. I can't go with a group because if I'm with a group, it could slow me down. But when I, but if I'm by myself, I could move fast. So one corner, uh, Daryl, Daryl will be in the corner. 
will be in the corner at like the, the alleyway in the corner of the alleyway where me and you first met. That's where Daryl will be. And if I need assistance, he can cover me. And Daryl asks, why me? And uh, Glenn says that your crossbow is quieter than his gun. And that, uh, and that, um, if, um, if I get, um, surrounded by walkers, I won't come back, I won't come back to you. I will run into the direction of where, where, uh, Brick, John and, John and T-Dar were at. And, um, uh, so the plan is I go up, get the back of the guns, and if I'm surrounded by walkers, I go into the direction of where, uh, Brick, uh, Brick, John, and T Dark Ray, if I get uh, surrounded uh, by Rockers there, I'll improvise. And um, Rick says, That's not really a bad plan, actually. And uh, Daryl asks Glenn, Hey, what'd you do? Hey, kid, what'd you do for all this? And uh, Glenn says, I used to deliver pizzas. Why? And uh, there doesn't say anything, of course. So they're all going down the ladder. Uh, Daryl. And uh, Glenn are getting ready, and uh, Daryl says, You got some balls for a chairman. And uh, Glenn tells Daryl, I'm American Korean. And uh, Daryl says, Whatever. And Glenn runs into the street, grabs the bag of guns, and uh, Rick's hat, of course, because he doesn't want to forget uh, Rick's hat. And then he tries to run to the direction of where John, Rick, and T Dog are at, but unfortunately, he gets surrounded by walkers. So while uh, he tries heading in the same block slash uh, area where Daryl's in, but Daryl's like hiding behind the dumpster waiting for Glenn. But then this mysterious character appears and his name is Miguel. That's right, Miguel from the Batos group is in this episode, but you'll see what I'm doing in a second. But uh, um, Daryl comes out of the trash can, aims his crossbow at Miguel, and, um, um, M Miguel's like, no, 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 don't shoot me! And, uh, and Miguel asks, uh, uh Daryl, what do you want? What do you want? And, uh, Daryl tells this kid that my brother's real, hurt real bad, have you seen him? And then Miguel yells, are you the man? Are you the man? Are you the man? And Daryl grabs his crossbow and hit, hits him in the face. And uh, he screams, Are you the man? And then Daryl's trying to cover his mouth, but he's still screaming, Help! And then, um, Glenn, um, not Glenn, um, two other characters come come out of nowhere. Their names, their names are Felipe and, and, uh, uh, Falori. Falori, yeah. He's really not that big of a character. It's just one of those season one minor characters that don't really do nothing for the story, to be honest. In a way, they both pop, pop out of nowhere. Uh, Fawori grabs his baseball bat and hits, uh, hits, hits Daryl on, on the ground of, and, uh, uh, Philip, Philip is kicking him. I kick him in the back with his foot, and then Glenn comes back with the back of guns, and a fully, and then a a Fulori is like Felipe, that's the back of guns, Bartol, take him, and then Glenn tries to run away and get away, but um he's grabbed by Fulori, and he and he grabs him, puts him on the on four, and um he hits him hits him with his baseball bat, and then we have uh uh Felipe just. Kicking him, kicking him, he's like not stopping. He grabs back guns and grab, grabs Glenn, taking him as a prisoner. And uh, there was yelling, Glenn, Glenn, no, Glenn, no. Fawori takes takes out this walker, um, puts a uh, gun in in the car, and uh, Felipe and Fawori get into the car, driving away. And there was like, you get back here, you get back here, you crazy bitches, you get back here. Get back here! Then John, T Dog, and uh, Rick come come to the scene, and uh, and come to the scene, and they were trying to uh, trying to hurt um Miguel, but um but um Rick uh, is like holding Daryl, like calm down, calm down, and uh, Miguel is freaking out, and uh, T Dog and John are like chillax, chillax. 
calm yourself down. And then, um, then that Rick tells Jared, we gotta go to walk through game through, and they, and, uh, the, and, uh, Rick, Daryl, John T. Dog, and Miguel just go back, go back in the building they were before. Uh, meanwhile, back at the Atlanta camp, you see the shot of Jim tied to a tree, and he's just thinking about how much he misses his wife and kids so much, and he's thinking about how, how much, um, he could have hurt Shane if, um, if he didn't dodge that attack he pulled, and that, um, Shane comes with a with a bottle of water and uh Shane's like, Do you want me to pour this on your head? And Jim's like, Yeah, please because because the area of where they're at obviously is hot because it just is. It's like Atlanta for crying out loud. So uh Shane pours the water on Jim's head and Jim says thank you and uh um Dale Dale asks uh Jim, Do you know why you were taking holes? And uh Jim tells Yoda, yeah, it was about a dream I had that I was digging holes and that, um, he tells Carl and Larry that you guys were in it too. And he goes to tell Carl that you weren't in it too, son. You were, you were worried about your dad or something. And, um, he asks Carl, are you worried about your dad now? And Carl says, no. And, uh, Larry says, we don't have to talk about that now. And, um, Jim also apologizes to Lori and to, um, uh, Sophia and Carl and he says, I'm sorry that I scared your boy. If I, like, scared your boy and your daughter. And, uh, where's this? It's okay. You, you had uh, a sunstroke. Nobody's blaming you. It could happen to, to, it could happen to any one of us. And, uh, um, Jim also asks Sophia, are you scared now? And, uh, she smiles and says, no, sir. And, um, uh, and then, um, that Jim tells, uh, Carl that your dad is a police officer, son. That that man... It's tough as nails. Obviously, I don't know him well enough, by, but he's a brave man. I've seen him. And, Shane, and he asks Shane, is that right? And uh, Shane says, yeah. And uh, Jim also tells Carl that there's nothing stopping him from getting, getting back to you and your boy. I promise you that. And they all smile in happiness and say thank you. And that, um, that Morales is asking... Um, Asking Jim, are you okay? And, uh, Jim says, yeah. And, uh, um, and then Morales also tells Jim, I'm really sorry about what happened to your wife and kids. Nobody deserved to go out like that. Not, not, nobody. And, um, Jim, Jim tells Morales, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And that I also appreciate your concern. And then, um, Morales says, you're welcome. We all gotta look after each other, right? And then, um, Morales, Morales goes back to, uh, to uh doing what he was doing before he's trying to gather all the locks and make a small wall so when the wall so when the fire starts the fire and the steam is not all, all up in everybody's faces so so yeah and then carol's like all right who wants to go catch fishes and that um carl and sophia are screaming me 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 no me no me <laughs> and then um where he sets his line as long as, uh, you two stay with Carol. And, uh, Carl says, yes, mom. And they both go off to catch, uh, fishes. Um, Barabas goes back to what he was doing before. And, uh, Vesta and Alan are, are asking Morales, like, hey, hey, can we help? And, uh, he says, yeah, of course. You two are always welcome to help. And, um, they both help, um, Morales. Dale goes back on, uh, watch, looking for walkers. Um, Shane goes goes um to get ready for uh the fish fire fire to get ready for and uh glory goes back to to jim and jim tells glory to watch to watch your boy don't don't ever let him out of your sight ever you keep your boy close where says okay and uh she walks away and she and and uh sheen Goes back to thinking how much he really misses his family. Jim just misses his family so much. And uh, he wishes that he could have saved them. Besides running away. Be after being after feeling like so helpless to save them. Meanwhile, back in Atlanta. Um, T-Dog's like, Dude, man, what the hell happened back there? And Daryl's like, I, like I told you and John, this little turd and douchebag friends came out of nowhere and jumped me. And Miguel is like, you're the ones that jumped, you're the one that jumped me, puto. 
man, this guy talks about finding his brother like some kind of calling guard. And then Daryl says, well, they took Glenn. They could take Merle, too. And then Miguel is like, Merle, what kind of hick name is that? I wouldn't name my, I would never name my dog Merle. And then Daryl gets upset and tries to, tries to kick him, but, but Rick and John stop, stop him, of course. And then, uh, Daryl goes through, um, Glenn's supplies bag and gets, um, Merle's hand and tells Miguel, you want to see what happened to the last dude that pissed me off? He grabs on Merle's hand and throws it on, on Miguel, and Miguel freaks out. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. And, um, Daryl is, uh, telling Miguel, we'll start with the feet this time. And Daryl's like, calm down, back off, Daryl, back off, calm down. Rick is t and then the next part is uh Rick telling Miguel the man that took our friend all we want to do is talk to him see if we can work something out and uh the next shot is is um John T Dog Daryl Rick and Miguel at uh, the the Vartos's place at the Vartos's headquarters and yes so Miguel uh, took them where the Vartos are at where they took Glenn. And, um, Rick asks his, uh, John T. Dog, are you sure you want, want to be, be patrolling from sniper rifles? Like, are you both sure you want to do this? And T. Dog, and T. Dog's like, yeah. And John's like, of course. They have Klein, obviously, so we gotta be cautious of, the, of these people. Because again, we don't know who, who these people are. And Rick says it's true. And that, um, and that John says, me and T. Dog will be on the roof as snipers. So, so if there's a problem, just, just um, just whistle and see, and so we'll know you. Brooke says okay, and then um, Daryl tells Miguel that um, one wrong move and you get an arrow in the ass. Just so you know, and then Miguel tells Daryl that she's gonna take an arrow on my ass and show it up yours. Just so you know, and Brick is like gee, and um, Miguel is like Guillermo. He's the he's the one. He's the leader. He's the one that runs the show. And Brooke's like, okay, then. Let's go meet Gimme. Let's go meet Gimme Guillermo. Guillermo. They, uh, Rick, Miguel, and, uh, Daryl, um, hop over, like, hop over the win window, like, on, I don't know, explain, like, they leap under, under the window and walk into the front entrance, obviously. And, um, they have their weapons out because, again, they don't know these people and they don't know what could happen. And then um, they're waiting at the gate and then the gate opens and you see Guillermo come come out. And uh, Guillermo's like, yo, you okay, little man? And uh, Miguel is like, they took to cut my feet off, Guillenta. And uh, Guillermo's like, do cops do that? And uh, Miguel is like, no, not him. He's right now. Right next, uh, Buto here. He cut off some dude's hand, man. He showed it to me. And, uh, and then Felipe, Felipe comes out and says, that's, that's, the, that's the Mongo right there that shot me in the ass with an arrow. Sup, homie. And then, um, Guillermo is like, chill, Felipe, chill. Guillermo is like, is that true? And then Rick says, well, we were hoping a little bit more for a calm discussion. And that, um, Guillermo says, says Felipe's little cousin. They got attacked. Um, uh, Felipe got shot in the ass. And you come up here with Miguel hostage. And you want to call a discussion? You fascinate me. And that, um, Guillermo asks, um, who's that dude, crazy dude to you anyway? You two don't look related. And, uh. Rick says he's one of our group members, more or less. And then, um, yeah, from what I understand, you have one, you have one of our own. Rick also tells Guillermo, you have one of ours, we, we have one of yours, you have one of mine. And that, um, we can make a deal. You give us back our man, we'll give you back yours. And then, um, and that, uh, Rick also says that sounds like a fair trade. And then Guillermo is like, that doesn't sound like a fair trade to me. And that um Miguel is like, come on G, come on. And then Guillermo's like, my people got attacked. And 
YouTube got an error on the ass. You guys come up, copy Pierre from Miguel Hostage, and you guys want to call him discussion? Really? And, and, um, most importantly, what's, what's the punishment for their pain and suffering? More to the point, with my back guns, and bricks like guns, and, um, on uh, Guillermo's like the bag in the street, the one that Felipe and Feloy went, went to go get. Yeah, those bag guns. And that, um, Brick says you're mistaken, and Gamer says I don't think so. And that Brick says you're mistaken about, about them being yours, they're my bag guns. And then, um, Guillermo says the bag was out in the street, anyone could have came around and said it was, it was theirs. Am I supposed to take your word? Most importantly, what's the thing stopping me from shooting? Holding on to people right here now, and I take what's mine. And Brick's like, You could do that or not. And then you see John and and T Dog aiming their, their sniper rifles at Guillermo in a badass way. And T Dog's like, Come on, man, make the deal, please. And then Guillermo's like, Faloy, zoo. And then you see these two men on uh, the rooftop, and then you see Glenn, they remove uh, the back from his head, and you see him in handcuffs, and he have his mouth taped. And he has, they have his mouth taped, obviously. Then, and then Grimaud's like, I see two options. Come back with Miguel and my back guns, everybody walks. We'll come back locked and loaded. We'll see what side spills more blood. Brick is like... It's like making that famous Rick Grimes look like, mm, okay. Guillermo, Felipe, and the others go back in the building, and then the next shot that takes place like an hour and something minutes later, um, uh, Rick puts the guns on uh, the table, and Daryl's like, those guns are, are, are worth more than gold, but they can also help us protect your kids, I mean, their food on the table, and that, um, those guns... Are not just worth gold, they're, they're worth your life. And uh, Daryl asks Rick, is it going to worth that to you? And T-Dog's like, more importantly, do you trust that Vardo, that that Vardo will give his word? And then Miguel, Miguel is like, you calling G a liar? And then Daryl was like, hits him and said, you part of this? You want to hang on to your teeth? And then T-Dog's T.R. continues by, by asking Rick, the question is, do you trust that Vardo that he will keep his word? And, um, there was like the real question, what are you willing to bet on it? It could be not only food and weapons, it could be your, it could be on your life. Is it going to worth that to you? And, um, Rick tells Daryl that, um, whatever the life, the life I have uh, now, I owe it to him. I was nobody in Clinton, just some idiot stuck in the tank. Could've walked away, but he did it. Neither will I. And then Daryl's like, you're gonna hand guns over. And then, um, Rick tells Daryl that I didn't see that. I didn't. And then John, John tells his group, well, we gotta do something. And then, um, Daryl, Daryl and Rick look at John and they all look at each other like, you know what, let's do this. So they all grab their guns and their weapons and, um, Miguel gets up and says, bro, this is nuts. And then Daryl's like, shut up, sit down, be quiet. <laughs> and then, um, uh, everyone's getting locked and loaded, ready to shoot everybody in place. And uh, Miguel is like, just do what she says. And then the next shot that takes place an hour later, they go back to the Vartos' uh, base. Like their main hideout, obviously. Like they go back, like that front entrance, and they have Miguel in the back of guns. And that um, they're ready to go go in and basically kill everybody, basically. So the so the Vartos let them in, and then she comes out and says, "I see my bag of guns. Not all of them are in the bag. Not all of them are in the bag." And Rick tells Guillermo, "That's because not yours." I thought I mentioned that. And then um, Felipe is like, "Let's just hold on your eyes right now, because you killed them all." And that um, Guillermo's like. I don't think you appreciate the gravity of this situation. And, uh, Rick is like, Oh, I'm pretty clear. He cuts, uh, uh Miguel's, uh, 
strains and give them back to uh, Guillermo and the rest of Bartos and Brick tells Guillermo that um, you have your man, I want mine. And then Guillermo says, I'm going to chop up your boy. I'm going to feed him to my dogs. They're the evilest, nastiest, manic motherfuckers you have ever saw. I picked him, I picked him up for free at Satan Yard Sale. I told you, I told you, didn't, told you what you had to do. Are you both for deaf? And uh, Rick, uh, Rick says, "Oh, my hearing is pretty fine." Like you said, calm, locked and loaded. And he pulls out his gun, and John pulls out his his gun. So does uh, Darren T Dog and the rest of Vartos do, of course. And uh, Rick also says, "Okay, then we're here." And then um, Guillermo is thinking thinking about what to do. What to do, like, what to do next. And then, out of nowhere, this old lady, uh, Felipe's, uh, grandmother, comes out and, well, and, well basically, basically says, Mr. Gilmert! And, um, Felipe is like, Grandma, go back with the others. Now! And, um, he tells Felipe that, Manatoma, Mangato Sas, Mr. Gilbert! It's his medicine. And, um, and, uh, and, uh, Guillermo's like, what's to your grandma, okay? This isn't the play for you right now. And, um, and, um, he says, you know what? Felipe, go take care of it, okay? And take grandma with you. And, um, uh, his gra grandma's like, are you dating? And, um, Brooks like ma'am and uh Felipe's grandma is like don't arrest him please he 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 came back when these people needed him most when he pulled himself together we need him here and uh Rick says ma'am I'm not here to arrest grandson and then um Felipe's grandmother is like then what do you want him for and then uh, Rick says he's helping us find uh, finding a missing person, a fellow named Glenn. And then uh, Felipe's grandmother says, "The Haitian boy. He's with Mr. Gilbert. Come, come. I show you. It's his medicine." And uh, Guillermo tells um his men to put their guns down and to let them pass, and they all do. And uh, John, Daryl, and T Dog also wore their weapons. The next shot is Felipe's grandmother taking Rick and the crew to this nursing home with numerous um, elderly people. And that uh, these people aren't really, the Vartos aren't really bad people. They're just people who are helping out the elderly and helping out those who are sick. And um, Rick is looking through the room seeing all these all random people. And then John notices this one girl who is right beside her mother's side. Of her bedroom, and uh, she and she is shouting for help, help! I need, I need help. My my mom needs water. And uh, John steps in and says, "Who uh, needs water?" And uh, the girl's like, "My mom, my mom needs water. She's really sick, and uh, she needs um needs some some water, like a glass of water, bottle of water, anything." And um, John John opens his heart a little bit and gives. Um, some of his water to, uh, to this girl's mom. John's like, here you go, ma'am. And, um, the man whispers, <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. And then, um, the girl also says, uh, thank you. And, um, the girl asks, his, uh, John, what's your name? And John says, my name's John Miller. What's yours? And, um, it is revealed to be that the woman that John just helped is to be like the, like it's Tara Chandler. That's right. It's Tara from C from the Walk the TV series. But in this series, I'm introducing her early. I'm introducing her as a season one character and I'm introducing her to be really different than her TV series counterpart. So I think introducing the, introducing, introducing her here early was actually a smart move because, um, she, I don't know, like, from the experiment, from the experience that she has of being a, being someone that was trained to be a police officer, sound sounded like a shame. So I said, I figured like, 
hmm, instead of adding her in season four, why not add her in season one instead? That sounds it's pretty interesting for the story and for the John Miller character because I really want that friendship with her and John to grow throughout seasons. So, yeah, Tara Chandler has just been introduced and uh, it is revealed that uh, that she is a girl that John just helped. And um, John is very polite and he shakes Tara's hand and says, nice to meet you. And um, Tara asks, are you with anybody? And uh, he says, yeah, I'm just with a group, a small group, it's me and three other people, nice people. And that um, we're just passing through. And, um, Tara says, uh, that's what's up. And, uh, John says, asks, uh, Tara, how, how did you get here? And, um, Tara says, well, it's complicated, basically. When the shit started, I was at, um, the academy of training to be a police officer. And then my boyfriend, Sam, came and got me. And, um... Me and him, like, when I was driving, I got into a car accident, and when I woke up, I saw Sam as a walker. And, um, I had to put him down after he turned into one of those things. And then, when I got out of the car, the next thing I knew it, these things were roaming around the streets. And, um, they were, like, eating people from the, from the heads, the neck, everywhere. And, I mean, it was just crazy. Like, these things started walking out quick and um john says that's crazy and john also says i'm sorry about your mom i mean not your mama about your boyfriend and um tara says thank you very much i really appreciate it and then um after that i just ran ran through the streets i was going through do apartments like like the building where my mom was at like i knew what building she was in but um there was like numerous apartment rooms and i was going crazy looking for her but thank god i found her because if not um something crazy would have happened and uh john says uh yeah i feel you but with my mom i would be going crazy and the next shot is rick uh daryl t-dog Guillermo and the others, they're like in the gymnasium of the nursing home, and uh, they see, uh, um, they see Felipe and, uh, the other, uh, Vartos helping Mr. Gilbert get his medicine and medical treatment he needs. Uh, Rick jokes and says, what the hell is this? And, uh, um, Glenn tells uh, the group that um, he had an asthma attack and if we didn't get him the asthma treatment he needed, he could suffocate and died. And that uh, T-Dog says, I thought you were being eaten by dogs, man. And then you see the uh, the funny shot of Glenn turning around and you see the three dogs in the bed barking. And it's a really funny scene like in the TV series. And then Rick uh, tells Guillermo, can I have a word with you please? You are the stupidest son of a bitch I have ever met. We walked in there right to kill every last one of you. And uh, Guillermo tells Rick, I'm glad it didn't go down that way. And uh, Rick tells Guillermo, if it had, that blood would have been in my hands. And Guillermo says, M mine too. We would have fought back. It wouldn't been the first time we had to, to protect the food, the medicine. I mean, what's left of it at least. The staff, the staff here, they just took off. Just left the elderly, all, like all the elderly here to die. And, um, Guillermo tells Rick that Felipe and I are the only two that stayed. And, uh, Rick asks, uh, Guillermo, um, what are you guys, doctors? And, uh, Guillermo says, Felipe is a nurse, a special care provider. Me? I'm not only the leader, but I'm the custodian. And Rick is, like, you stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> then the next shot is John, Rick, uh, T-Dog, and Darren Glenn going to Guillermo's office. And um, they talk They talk a little bit. And um, they said... Um, Sorry about that. <laughs> stupid analogy. Rick uh, asks Guillermo, um, what about the rest of your crew? And Guillermo tells Rick... Um, um, the Vartos, uh, stick around, uh, trip out of the cars, and, uh, Tara, um, sign ships, um, leave for guard duty, and then, um, 
Felipe, um, and the grand, and um, his little brother decided, decided to stay, and that's pretty good though because we need some muscle. And then um, Guillermo was told right that people we encountered, since all this shit went down, we also came across pundlers, you know, they kind of take by force. And Rick tells Guillermo that's not who we are, and Guillermo tells Rick, I didn't know. One man, I'm here, Felipe, saying that uh, him and Fulori got attacked, and then an hour and seven minutes later, you come out, you call Miguel hostage. And T Dog's like, I guess the world changed, hmm? And uh, Guillermo says, No, it's the same as it ever was. So we bolt the windows, seal the, seal the door shut, except for one entrance. Novartos go, and uh, the scavenge was left. Forward to left to uh, keep us going, which is good. Some of the elderly can't get to the bathroom by themselves, so that's just a dream. People we encountered, they all look to me now. I don't even know why. And Rick tells Guillermo because they can, and then, um. Rick decides to give half of his guns and ammo to Guillermo and the group because there's not a, they don't have a lot of guns to be honest. They don't have a lot of manpower and they need manpower in order to protect to protect what they got. And uh, Guillermo says, "Thank you very much. Me and my people won't for, won't forget this. And if you if you and your people need a place to crash, you can always crash here." And uh, Rick says, "Thank you very much. I really appreciate that." Uh, Rick Darrell, T Dom John, uh, and Glenn leave the place. And um, Darrell asks Rick how, many, how much longer do these people got. And um, Rick tells Darrell how long do any of us. And then John's like, oh my god. And then Darrell's like, where the hell is our van? And then Glenn's like, we let the right hero we'll take it. And Rick's like, Merle. And you see this funny shot of, of T Dog. Of T Dog, he's like, Holy shit. And then, um, there was like, he's going back to the camp. We gotta take this car. We gotta, we gotta hot wire it and we gotta get in, get in now. We had to head back to the camp. If not, just, we're gonna have a big problem on our hands. Come on, Richie, let's go. Let's go. We gotta go. Like, right now, we gotta go. They all get in the car and they start driving away. Meanwhile, back at the, at the Atlanta camp, uh, Andrea's at Dale's, um, RV and he's looking she's looking for wrapping paper to wrap up uh Amy's gift because she knows it's Amy's birthday tomorrow and um she's telling Dale like you have no wrapping paper car covering uh paper or anything and then uh Dale jokes and says well if I was informed of zombie apocalypse what's stocked up and that uh, uh Andrew tells Dale that it's Amy's birthday tomorrow and then um I got her uh this and uh Andrew also tells Dale that you don't give a gift unwrapped and then, um, that Dale says, deep breath, I'm sure we'll find something here. I'm sure we'll find something here. That's what he says. And then, um, he walks away, getting ready to, uh, uh, clean the RV a little bit, so that it's not all dirty or whatever. Meanwhile, back at the, uh, back outside of the Linda camp, um, uh, uh, Morales tells Lori that me and, me and Vesta and Alan, we put the rocks around uh, the campfire so when the fire starts, the steam is not blowing, blowing around everybody's face and that the rocks can be higher and have to be hit. And uh, Gloria says, that's smart. And, um, and Morales says, thanks, but I had a little help. And, and the and I'll smile and have a nice uh, heart turn moment. And then on uh, the next shot is uh, Carl and Shane walking to a gym and he had and uh, Shane is like, Jim, are you okay? And um, Jim's like, I'm better. And that um, and that um, that Shane's like, why don't you come join us with, come join us for uh, the fish fire tonight? And um, Jim's like, looking at Carl and says, I would like that very much. Thank you. Thank you. And um, they both say you're welcome. And um. They release Jim from that tree, and uh, all good, enough, all good, everything's good. Um, nothing bad that um, Jim already apologized off off screen that he apologized to Shane for trying to hit him with the shovel, and Shane says it's okay, 
Then the next shot is is uh John John being like, Come on, you worthless piece of junk. Mm, mm, mm. Stupid fucking vehicle. We're gonna have to run now. And um Rick is like, We have no other choice, we're gonna have to run. We're gonna have to run up this dumb mountain to get to the crew. And um they run up, up to the mountain. But keep in mind, Merle is nowhere to be seen. Like, they don't see the car anywhere, but they're just freaking out. Because they think, like, Merle is at the camp or maybe doing some crazy shit or whatever. So, John, Rick, Glenn, Daryl, and T-Dog are running up the mountain. They're trying to get to the crew. They're running up the mountain. And the next shot that takes place um, an hour and something minutes later, it's complete nighttime and whatever. Everyone's at the fish at the fish fryer. And they're, ha they're having fun. They're really talking about old times and nobody talking about who they were before and that um they're eating fish and having a good time obviously so so yeah and uh, morales is like still playing with that watch and uh dale's like what's wrong with my watch and that um morales tells dale i see you every day winding that thing like a village priest saying help me and um uh, Jackie says, I wonder, yeah, I wonder this myself, and, uh, they was like, I'm missing the point, and then Jackie says, unless I bet the sign that, that the world, uh, seems to come to an end, at least hit a speed fall for a quite long while, and then they all, all laugh, or whatever, and that Dale tells the group, time is important, the days at least, Angela, did you think Angela, come on, now back me up here, <laughs> and Dale tells his group that um, I like the, ma the saying of the father giving the son the watch when he said it's been passed down for multiple and I mean multiple generations and that um, Dale was like I give you the mausoleum of all hope and desire not that it would benefit your needs no better than it did mine or my father's before me but I give it to you. Not that you may remember time that you also may forget it. Now and then. And not spend all of your breath trying to conquer it. Y'all, you know, everyone smiles and you, and uh, Amy jokes and says, You're so weird. <laughs> and everyone's laughing, whatever. And that all. Um, that that all my deal deal jokes and says could be either that or my bad paraphrasing <laughs> and everyone's laughing and then Amy tells Andrea Andrea I got pee and then uh, Andrea's like really and then Amy's like jeez not my fault you trying to trying to be all sassy around here and then everyone laughs of course <laughs> and then the next shot is um Ed in his tent and my um, walk and the walker is banging on his tent but he doesn't know that and he's like. Carol, I told you all to leave me the hell alone, didn't I? And then um, the walker's still banging the tent, and then uh, it gets up, and it's like, what did I say? And um, he sees the walker, and he's like, oh, shit. Amy comes out of the RV, and, and, and she's like, we're out of toilet paper? Really? And then um, back at uh, its tent, the walker grabs uh, it by the neck and bites him on the neck really hard. <laughs> really hard and he's infected but he's not dead yet keep in mind he's not dead yet and that um and that back at uh the Atlanta Campbell Walker also pops out of nowhere and bites Amy on the arm and then and then she screams in pain and screams and then everyone in the group notices this and start freaking out and the kids start freaking out and Morales is like stay next to your mother and uh and um and Carol is staying close to, uh, Carol is staying close to, to her daughter, and her daughter's really scared, and Carol's telling Sylvia, stay, stay by me, stay by me, and that, um, Carl's screaming, mom, and, uh, Lori wants to her son to protect her, and then, um, Morales, uh, grabs his baseball bat, and kills two walkers in a badass way, it's a really bloody scene, he's protecting his family, no matter, uh, no matter the cost, and he is doing a fantastic job, he is killing those walkers in a badass way, he's not giving a crap, Shane grabs his shotgun, and shoots two walkers in the head, and then he grabs his knife, and stabs one in the head, throw, and f grabs his head, and throws it in the fire, meanwhile, multiple walkers are eating, 
almost everybody at the at the Atlantic camp, like fifteen people. Like fifteen people. It's not really a lot of people, just like like fifteen or sixteen people. One of the Atlantic camp uh survivors is is bitten on the neck and then bitten on the arm and then bitten on the leg all at once. Meanwhile, a Amy is also getting bitten on the neck by the same marker that bitten on the arm and and Andrew's like, No and then and then uh Jim comes out of nowhere with a with a metal baseball bat and he starts bashing that walker. He gets mad and he kills that walker in a brutal way. And um Morales also grabs his baseball bat and he starts starts hitting more walkers. He, he is not giving a crap. He's killing these walkers in a badass way. Shane also grabs his gun and shoots more of them in the head. Glory and the vest start like F it and they grab their AK 47s and their pistols and they start and just start shooting up mad walkers. Mad walkers protecting protecting the kids. Um Meanwhile back 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 on the thing um Rick made it back to the group, but by they know it is too late. Rick, John, Daryl, Glenn, and T-Dog hear gunshots from the Atlanta camp, and Rick is like, oh my god. And Sh John is going crazy. He's like, a Vesta! A Vesta! And uh, he grabs his shotgun, and he kills mad walkers he's going full-fledged doom slayer on these on these walkers he is going crazy he's driving his shoe and he is stomping stomping his foot on multiple walkers he also grabs his gun and his shotgun and he starts killing mad walkers it's a very brutal scene uh rick t-dog glenn and daryl also grab their shotguns and ak-47s and kills mad walkers and basically killing all those walkers, obviously. John sees uh the camp survivor that got bitten on the neck and then and, and on the leg and on uh on the arm and um he is suffering and he is crying and screaming in pain and, and uh this survivor's name is Percy, so um he's not really all that big of a character, he's a minor character and uh unfortunately he's one of those characters that got bitten, unfortunately, so John cries and and he says to himself, "I don't, I'll never do do this do this again." May God forgive me. He grabs his his shotgun and he aims the shotgun at uh, Percy's head, and he tells Percy, "I'm so sorry, man. I'm so sorry." And boom, and shoots him in the head. So Percy is dead. Uh, and John was the one to do it to end his pain and suffering because he got bit multiple times and and he also got bit on the neck and on the arm and on the leg by a, by a walker for God's sakes and and a Percy's girlfriend also gets eaten and devoured by walkers as well and um, Rick uh, grabs uh, his shotgun and and kills a, a walker. Rick screams, Lori, Carl. And Carl's like, Dad! And, uh, Carl runs to his son in tears because he was scared, obviously. T Dog asks John if he's okay, and uh, John says, I'll live. Meanwhile, Amy is over, is over her sister's dead body, and he, she cries and says, I don't know what to do. And uh, Amy tells Andrew, You do. For I love you, baby sister. And then she dies, basically. But this this is an end of her. Trust me, you'll see what I'm talking about in uh, episode 6. But, um, and she's crying. She dies, and she, and just crying. Amy, Amy. <laughs> and the next show is Jim Town Group. I remember my dream now. Now I remember why I built the holes. And boom. That is the end of the episode. Next episode is going to be where uh, Brooke and the crew try and go to the CDC building. Um, um, another character will die in uh, next week's episode. I want to see who it is. But to those people who actually watch the TV series, you know what I'm talking about. But, um, I mean, we'll see. <laughs> anyway, like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next episode coming next week. So, peace.